Erectile dysfunction, or otherwise known as impotence, is where a man realizes that they are unable to get a natural erection through normal stimulation. Sometimes it's temporary, but as it becomes more permanent and the problem becomes more obvious to the man, then they often do need to pick up the courage and accept that they need to go and see their family doctor and discuss their treatment options. The treatment options that would be offered to a man generally would start with just a medical assessment to make sure that we're not missing some other condition that might have set off the erectile dysfunction. Generally though, once those issues are resolved, the man will usually try what's called an oral erectogenic drug. What that means is it's a tablet that can give him an erection. The three tablets in the market currently are Viagra, Levitra and Cialis. They all work in a similar way. Some have uh, different side effects in different people, but generally you would try at least one or two different brands for at least three or four different doses before you decide that the drugs don't work for you. People tend to be afraid because of early reports of cardiac death or heart deaths with these medications. Men who are assessed by the GP and deemed to be safe to try these drugs will be able to try them and generally it's very safe. There are some minor side effects that people may notice. They include a headache, which is unusual, uh, but can occur and can put a man off using the medication. Sometimes uh, blocked nose or nasal congestion can be a problem uh, and very rarely also a discoloration in the vision. But as the tablet wears off, those issues tend to settle down. The drugs generally work in about 60 to 70 percent of men who try them. They best work in men who are getting a soft erection who just need to firm it up a little bit. But a man who perhaps has not had an erection for over five years is unlikely to respond to the tablets. The other treatments that we try include a vacuum erection device and that's where a device is placed over the penis and a vacuum is created within the device to suck the penis into the device. That can happen either by a manual pump or an electronic pump. Once the penis is full through the vacuum, a firm ring is placed onto the base of the penis to keep the erection held. Another treatment that we could try would be called penile injection therapy. That's where we teach you, much like a diabetic needs to inject themselves with insulin, we teach you to inject the penis, a small amount of a drug, that will uh, cause a natural erection. It does take about 10 or 15 minutes for that erection to um, come through, uh, and then it's quite a reliable erection. The Injection therapy uh, tends to work well, but some men just can't bring themselves to put a needle into their penis, and that's just a fact of life. We do discuss it with them, but I think if a man feels he's unable to do that, then that's reasonable and we should not pursue it. The final option would be reconstructive surgery, where we surgically implant an inflatable device, which is a fairly advanced technology, into the penis to emulate or realistically form a new erection. The device is pumped through a small device in the scrotum which the man can manipulate. Fluid is transferred from a collection bag inside the tummy which is hidden well away from view and one you cannot feel through the pump into the penis. It's very reliable in the sense that you are able to pump it up within 5 or 10 pumps and you have an erection within about 10 seconds. That brings back the spontaneity. When you're completed, you just deflate the pump and the penis goes down. Satisfaction rates vary depending on uh, different surveys, but generally penile implant surgery is very well received. For a man and his partner who are comfortable with the idea of penile implant surgery, over 90% of people say they would have happily have the surgery once again. The most important thing is that any man who realizes that his erections are starting to fail, and more importantly causing him some personal grief, that that man does not suffer in silence. He needs to pick up the courage to go and see his GP, who is usually very accepting of the fact that he may have erectile dysfunction and is used to dealing with those types of issues. That man will usually uh, try some tablets. If they don't work, they may often need to be referred to a urologist that's a specialist who deals with these types of problems. Urologists though do subspecialize to some extent and it's important that the man sees a urologist who deals with penile reconstructive surgery and more importantly implant surgery. That urologist is best equipped to discuss the issues with the man. The most important thing I think for any man is not to suffer in silence when this issue occurs.